Welcome back. This is the fourth video in section 5.3. Uh, we're going to cover example 5.3.4 using the techniques that we just learned in the previous video. So we're asked to consider the matrices A and B. These are two by three matrices. And we're asked to find the elementary matrices E, F, and G such that G times F times E times A equals B. So you'll recognize the same approach as what we've been doing in the last video, except here we're calling the matrices E, F, and G rather than E1, E2, E3, simply because we know there's only three of them, so we don't need to uh, bother using subscripts. Now, remember, left multiplying by elementary matrices is the same as uh, applying elementary row operations. So the idea here is to, starting from the matrix A, is to find what operation I need to apply to get matrix, let's say, A1. And I'm going to call this operation OE, right? Instead of uh, O1, since it corresponds to matrix E, I'm going to call it OE. And then we're going to need another operation corresponding to matrix F, so I'm going to call it OF. And finally, a third operation that's going to turn A2 into B, and we're going to call that OG. Okay? We know it's three operations because we're asked to find three elementary matrices. Okay? So the idea is to find what these operations are going to be. And so we can, just by inspection, just by looking at the matrices, since they're uh, fairly small, it won't be too difficult to find a path from A to B. So you notice the 2 in B is at the bottom, so I'm going to start with interchanging the rows. I'm going to do row 1, interchange with row 2, and that's going to give me my second matrix. So I'll have 0, 5, minus 2, 2, 1, 1. Now, you don't have to start with that operation. In fact, we probably won't have the same sequence if you do it. Uh, the sequence is not unique, but we know that in three steps we should be able to get to B. And so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add the two rows, and that's going to be my new row 2. So I'm going to do row 2 plus row 1 becomes row 2. Okay, and You can see why, so I'm trying to get to 2, 6, minus 1, right? So 0, 5, minus 2, 2, 6, minus 1. So I'm almost there, and I can see that if in my next step I have to obtain 0, 10, minus 4, and 2, 6, minus 1, well then you can see that the operation is simply going to be to multiply row 1 by 2. So 2 row 1 becomes the new row 1. Okay, so these are the three operations that uh, we called OE, OF, and OG, and they correspond to the three elementary matrices. Okay, and you notice that the order is reversed. We apply OE first, that gives us matrix A1. Uh, so applying OE to matrix A, that's like doing E times A, right? And that gives us the matrix A1. But uh, when we apply OF to A1, we obtain the matrix A2. So that's like taking F and left multiplying by uh, the new matrix A1, which is EA. And then finally, um, you can think of it as applying the operation OG to A2 in order to get B. And that's like left multiplying by G. Right? So that's the logic behind this. And now, of course, we actually want to find what those matrices are, the matrix uh, E, F, and G, because we only have the operation so far. So to find the elementary matrices, of course, we always go back to the identity matrix. So we're going to start with 1, 0, 0, 1. And we apply the same elementary row operation uh, operations that we applied to the matrix A. So this first operation, this will give me the first matrix. So interchange row 1 and row 2, so 0, 1, 1, 0, and this will be matrix E. And then we do the same thing with the second operation, 1, 0, 0, 1, and we apply row 2 plus row 1 becomes row 2, and that, so row 2 plus row 1, so 1, 0, 1, 1, that will be matrix F. And finally, the same thing with the last operation. We're going to do 2, row 1 becomes row 1, and that will give us 2, 0, 0, 1, and that will be matrix G. Okay? And so the three matrices we were looking for are E equals 0, 1, 1, 0, matrix F equals 1, 0, 1, 1, and matrix G is equal to 2, 0, 0, 1. Okay? Now, I'm not going to multiply them because we're going to do that in part B regardless, but if you were doing this exercise, it would be always would be wise to always check that when you multiply them out, G, F, E times A equals B. Okay? And you can do that as an exercise, but actually we're going to do it in part B because, well, let's read it together. Okay, So in part B, find an invertible matrix P such that P, A equals B. Well, we found three matrices such that G, F, E equals A. Right, so 
since g f e times a i said equals a i meant g f e times a equals b and of course that means that we can just rename this product matrix p right and so we have p equals g f e and since it's a product of elementary matrices it will be an invertible matrix right uh, we saw that in the previous statement so let's actually find uh, the matrix p and so g f e means matrix 2 0 0 1 times the matrix 1 0 1 1 times the matrix 0 1 1 0 right that's the matrix g f e uh, matrix multiplication is, is associative so you can do these two first if you like so if you multiply the first two you're going to get g f so we can start with matrix g f and then we're going to multiply that by e so g f first row times first column two times one zero times one is two and zero second row first column one and second row second column also one right and e is still zero one one zero and then we can carry out that multiplication and that will give us g f e and that'll be row one column one zero two and then one one and that is the matrix GFE, or in other words the matrix p so p is zero two one one and that's the invertible matrix we're looking for and here again it'd be a good idea always to check that it's the right matrix by simply multiplying right it's supposed to be p times a equals b so that's a quick multiplication we can actually check it zero two one one times the matrix a which is two one one oh five minus two and if we carry out that multiplication we get uh, zero ten minus four two six minus one which is in fact the matrix b and that's exactly what we want to show and that is the end of